talk to us a little bit about how you see reach and engagement um, and where it's heading, especially as mobile being such a huge factor in the mix. Talk a little bit about that yeah. and, and dive down as deep as you want. Well, I think that um, I mean, some of the good things that we have both in, in terms of pure measurement of you know, reach and engagement is the, the development of the tools that we have. So if we're looking at the likes of even just like three days, you know, we get new tools every day to help us measure. And we've always, as mobile guys, we've been like, you know, how do we measure all this stuff? But I think recently, even th like three days ago, we had Comscore release um, their new product, which enables you know, cross-device um, you know, deduplication of audiences and stuff like that. Um, and we have uh, Google's products such as Active Lift being moved across onto the mobile channel as well. So I think we're really in a sweet spot for that, um, or at least we're getting further away from the bad spot we were in. Um, but I think that you know now with with video be being um, you know being um, promulgated across more platforms, particularly around social, we're getting into a space where we're not chucking video in people's faces. We're actually being able to contextualise the usage of video a lot more within. You know, social networks, particularly, um, but also within within uh, you know nice ad properties. One of my favourite examples of that recently is um, is you know when you look at what T-Mobile did around the Super Bowl this year. You know, ten, you know, typically you try and go for a big broadcast TV play, but T-Mobile's uh, option this year was to go for a mobile video play in partnership with NBC, which I think is a really interesting kind of alternative way to get video contextualised into how people are, are relating to it. What do you think, where do you think we are with all the proximity marketing, from beacons to NFC, the different GPS, along with audience targeting? Yeah, well we're at an early stage. Um, obviously, you know, the GPS proximity products are, are getting better and I think there are guys like Think Near who are, who are moving that game forward. The beacon space for me is kind of interesting, um, interesting in a, in a difficult kind of way. Um, the, op the, the big play for me, for beacons particularly, and this is the way we work with our clients on that area, is that it's not really a big ad play. You know, you have the likes of InMarket who are kind of, you know, putting in some beacon networks and stuff, which are, you know, delivering some nice early results in CPG. But for me, the, the big play for that is really a CRM play. You know, beacons have to be app-based. And so, you know, the obvious way to generate incremental sales for someone like a retailer is to embed beacon capability into their core CRM, their vouchering and the stuff they do, rather than kind of outsourcing that to, you know, to any brands to come into store. So I would, I, I think that we will see, and you know, the trials that are going on in you know, mass retail are more about loyalty plays on behalf of the retailer rather than the brand. So that's where I see Beacon's you know, really headed. The bigger issues around Beacon is that most clients, you know, obviously some of the mass retailers have you know, quite sophisticated loyalty, um, particularly you know, outside the US. Um, but the bigger problem is that most brands don't have a, a big kind of uh, data infrastructure to enable, to enable them to deliver relevance and timeliness to their consumers when Beacon comes, I mean, when they're in proximity to a Beacon. The worst thing you can do is to use Beacon to just spam the same message to everybody. And I think people have realized that, which is why you don't see Beacons on every main street in America just sending out millions of messages all day long. Um, so it's kind of good that Beacons have been a little bit slow so that the experience and the value to the business can be honed and got right before it really hits scale. We built, just before I left the UK, we built a thing for Guinness in Ireland, um, which was fun, which is an app to, you know, to, um, for Guinness fans to help them get more Guinness, which is obviously a fun project to be a part of. Um, and, 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 that was, and that was, it was, you know, I did a lot of research for that yeah. project, so you can imagine. Field testing. Um, yeah, yeah, you have to. Um, and, uh, and, and what was interesting about that is the whole proposition about it was not just, you know, trying to, you know, CRM the user. It was trying to interpolate the brand into their circle of friends, right? So it's not just drink a Guinness. It's like you and your friends who all like rugby should go and watch the game in the pub because it's a much more social and fun way to enjoy rugby and enjoy Guinness than just, you know, go and drink a Guinness. And so, so that kind of approach to... And pulling a, a, a professional Guinness from the tap is way better than oh, anything you get right, at home. Exactly, and more profitable. Yeah. Um, but it's also about the pubs. You sure. know, the pubs have a unique place in Irish life, and so to understand mobile's role in bringing people and their friends together into the pub, that's kind of an advanced use of mobile that I think is uh, is really nice these days.